RPG podcast actual play here on the Vibe Tribe Productions. I am your game master, Riku. You can find me on social media as Pup Riku or Puppy Riku. You can also find me here on the Vibe Tribe Productions on various different games. You can find me also the being the game master for the Crystal City, as well as playing in Brave New Wild and A Walk Among Gods and Tavern Tales, which we finally just had our character creation episode four i'm really excited for that so make sure to check those out as well as all of our shows make sure to follow us on social media at the vibe tribe and we will see you around we have a fantastic episode for you tonight as we have gotten to the climax of this episode as it seems like the team has figured out who is behind the sleeping samurai but first who is our team we're in season two of this. You better know by now who they are. But let's introduce you to them again, starting with the mad lad himself, Mikey. Damn, we're going to start with me. Okay, here we go. As I had finished a chicken nugget in my mouth. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Mikey. This is the founder of Vibe Tribe Productions and all overall mad lad, mad genius, sleep deprived, huggable and squishable, whatever you want to call it. You can find me all over the socials at Pop Culture Geek. You can also follow us here at Vibe Tribe Productions, where you may want to give us a follow to stay up to date on everything we got going on, not just for season two, but all the amazing things that we did in season one and looking forward to the future as well. You can find me running way too many fucking games is what we're doing. Whatever. All right. I can't say that. Oh, that's right. Editing person, you just do the duck. Be like, Wah. no, we're this is an audio one. We're not on YouTube for this That's, one. Hey, the that, duck well, is we, mine. We are. We're posting the audio. <laughs> we're YouTube, posting this. Yeah, yeah, continue, continue. Ah, we're fair, fair, fair. We're not monetized yet. Anyways, I gotta keep. I gotta remember that. You can find me running Brave New Wilds, Neon Memories, Death Veil, Call of the Deep Season Two, Tavern Tales, and all the other podcasts. The Divergence. Biconics Wrestling Podcast, Unprofessional Development. I'm doing way too many things. But tonight, I am in the player's seat. And I am so happy to once again get to play Ramon, your Path of the Totem Barbarian. I'm excited to see what kind of fights we get into tonight. But more importantly, I'm excited for our Technomancer Wizard to have his Tron slash RuneScape exploration it's gonna be a good time awesome yeah we got some really cool things planned for you all right next up we have mini oh shit that's me hi what's up guys i am mini moss 2218 or mini or evan whatever you want to call me catch me on those, all the socials same name i also run a walk among gods i'm the guy that runs that game that's a little crazy over there but i'm over here playing rashmi and being absolutely terrified because i'm terrified of this game yeah luck you have no reason to be scared. I've made mistakes by giving you too much access and control to my character, okay? I've learned from my mistakes, <laughs> but I'm still scared. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. Anyway, next up, we have Sutphin. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's Sutphin. And yes, I still have Parkinson's. Woo! Yeah, Edgar. About to get real. It's I've been waiting for this one for seems like a month, but I know it's only been two weeks. But uh, yeah, find me on the TikToks as Cosmos Prefect. I'm in here. I'm in Crystal City. Oh, Junior Braves of the Apocalypse. There's others that I can't remember right now, but they're all on there. So come check us. Check everybody out, and let's see what uh, see what fun happens tonight. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Next up, we have Adolfo. It is I, Adolfo, the Nerdy Puerto Rican, here, season two of Vibe Tribe. You can find me over playing Brave New Worlds, over talking some smack on Divergence, and playing over on Neon Memories. But in this game, Moin Friends, I am playing Deep Gnome Chromancer, Dagny Huta Crypta. Yeah. Oh, yes. And I look forward to Dagny every time. All right. Next up, we have Dakota. Hey, I am Dakota or Shiro, whichever. I am playing Alex Argenti in this campaign, our Circle of the Moon Druid. You can also find me on a shit ton of shows here, including Tavern Tales, Crystal City, Duskvale, and Call of the Deep, as well as on ADH Adventures on Mondays, playing Gods of Orlea Phase 2. I'm very excited to to watch Sutphin's interactions tonight. I'm very excited to watch all of us die in a fight tonight. And I'm very excited to get murdered by as a spider. It's going to be great. All right. And finally, we have Josh. Well, hello, everybody. It is I, Josh, a.k.a. MG Preacher. Hopefully you recognize my handle because I am a veteran of uh, Vibe Tribe Season 1. If you do not know this handle, then you need to go back and just rewatch Season 1. It won't be too difficult. But tonight, I will be playing Thorgmir Zinehorn, the party's ranger. Because somebody's got to cover these guys' ass at long range. And also, my character would not be complete without my lovable, furry, canine companion, Leo. He's a good pepper. He's he a good is boy. The go- he is the goodest boy. What are you talking about? All right. And as you can see, we are down a player tonight. And unfortunately, Dylan will no longer be with us on the Academy. Unfortunately, When it comes to personal life and work, things just got a little bit crazy for him and he needs to step back from the game for a while. So tonight, as part of the session, we will be sending off his character, but we are sending it off in a way that when things get better for Dylan or if he wishes to, he can definitely return to the game if he does does he does pass along to everyone here he loves you all he has really enjoyed playing with everybody and really loved this game he wishes you all the best and hopefully he'll be back one day soon dylan hope all is well hope you hope things work out well and can't wait to see you up in minneapolis soon all right so last we spoke you've all discovered that the pictures in the newspapers that you've received were photoshopped and specifically photoshopped around a lot of the people, a lot of the other samurai that were in the pictures to lead you to believe they were other people that you've met when they weren't. You've decided to, from the advice of Sarah, one of your academy cohorts, decided to tell you about how Edgar and his technomancy is able to travel to the data realm. And with this, can hopefully trace the pictures back to where they were photoshopped from and figure out who did this once and for all. Most of you all decided to go up to Sarah's room to prepare for the journey, while Alex decided to go on his own to investigate Nina and after a while shaping into a spider and sneaking into her apartment. As we go back to the room, we see as as Edgar begins his jump into the data realm. And that is where we begin tonight's story. As the rest of you are sitting there at the computer, with Edgar's seemingly lifeless body, with this thin thread of magic going from his chest into the computer, as a figure appears on the screen that you think that appears to be Edgar, but not how you all recall him to look. So, Sutfin, I'd like to for you to describe what Edgar looks like in this new world, in the datascape. So, it looks like the cat. Yeah. <laughs> As the cat walked across. Exhibit to A. Baxi? To Baxi? <laughs> Exhibit B as they come back across. Come on. Get your camera time. So, my, my, out of the way, my idea of Edgar in the Dataverse is 
I guess, not really complete polar opposite of what he is now or in real life. And I know I'll probably draw comparisons to some of the other movies or whatever, but I'm kind of seeing him as, think of Roland, the gunslinger, just tall, waif-like, hardened, whatever, just ready to just tear shit up. All right. I'll be sorely disappointed if I don't hear, you feeling lucky, punk? <laughs> See. Yes. As you see this alternate version of Edgar appear on your screen, you see the rest of the screen fill up with different UI elements. You actually do see a health bar for for Edgar. The space begin to fill up with NPCs or seemingly digital people and places. You appear to be in what looks like a train station. It looks like a central hub where trains are pretty much going to everywhere. It's this endless station and you are currently holding one of the pictures from from the newspaper that we knew was photoshopped and that while you're here it is currently glowing you begin searching for where to go and as you're walking down past a few of the trains in front of one of the trains, you see the picture begin to glow brighter. The train is your normal subway train, what it looks like, while there is what appears to be a train conductor standing there calling, All aboard! Yes, Dagny. Sorry, sorry about that. Can I just have a quick clarification where, sure. where the rest of us are? Yes, the rest of you are currently in Sarah's room. He, she has a computer set up that you are all watching this all unfold. Just as a note, Edgar cannot hear you, but you all can hear everything that's in there. Okay, excellent. Thank you. All right, so Edgar, what do you do? I'm guessing since it's... So I'm near the glowy or near the train where it's glowing. So I guess I'll go ahead and check this train out and see... If it's, I guess I'm trying to say if it is glowing because I'm near the train or glowing because I need to be on set. So after walking around a little bit and investigating the train, you feel as you start walking in the direction of the train and walking the glow and almost like the pull is feeling stronger as you either look away or start walking away, you could feel, you could see that the glow is getting less. It's almost as you get the feeling like the picture is almost like a compass right now. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and board the train before it leaves. As long as there's not a big sign on it that says its name's Blaine. Nope, it's not named Blaine. So you approach the train and the conductor stands in front of you and goes... Oh, ticket, please. I'll search around in my pockets, and for some reason, I think that maybe holding up the photo might suffice as the ticket, maybe. You go ahead and hold up the photo, but and as you hold it up on the back is now what looks like a New York City Metro card. Okay. So does do I, like, swipe it, or can I just... Yeah, you show him the ticket. I know uh, you could just you could show him the metro card. He'll let you pass, and you just swipe yourself in. Okay, cool. That'll work. All right. So you walk in there. You go to board the train. That the destination for that train is going to Hacksville. The train itself is pretty empty. There's not a lot of people going this direction. Those that are, there's two other people in the car that you choose, both in long black drenched coats, hoods up, really avoiding people and just sitting there on the subway as the train pulls away. As the train moves, you see the view of this central hub area. You see the bright colors, the fantasy elements that are a mix between different types of realities, yet all coexisting in one place. Things flying, things swimming, water, islands in places they shouldn't. And as your train continues, you watch as things start to get a little darker and darker. It begins raining. 
And as you pull up to the station for Hacksville, it is a very dark city. Very back alleys type city. It's raining. And when you look out of there, the neon lights from all of the shops. There are computer stores everywhere. There are repair stores. There are internet cafes. There's everything around here related to computers. So you step off the train, you step off at the station. What, are you, what is your next actions? Did the, the other two passengers, are they still on or did they get off? Just out of curiosity. They got off the train at the same place as you. Go ahead and make a perception check for me, though. First roll of the night. I've been doing this a lot here lately, it seems. That's a six. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, they get off the train. Same stop as you. Okay. You essentially see them. They go separate directions, disappearing behind a corner. Gotcha. I guess I'll, I'll peruse and look around and see. Is there, I'm guessing, shopkeepers, I'm assuming, that maybe I could query? All the shops appear to be closed. Hmm, okay. Well, that's, that's annoying. So I guess I could window shop for a little while. Cool. And I guess, does the glowy photo change any as I'm moving from train to said dark alleys? Yeah, so you, as you're exploring and taking in, there's a lot of, you do see a few drones, you see a few, like, robotic helpers, not really warforged, but more actual robots, folks on the streets with cybernetic attachments throughout their bodies. You are very out of place in this area. As you are walking through, none of the shops, none of the stores, none of the displays really give a reaction. But then you get close to a hotel. And as you get in front of the front doors, that the picture is beginning to glow a lot stronger. Okay. Can you make another perception check for me? Let's see if this one's better. Oh, that's a net 20. Oh, shit. Woohoo. Finally, that's my one for the week. I'm done. Thank you. Try the veal. As you are, as you approach this hotel, you get this feeling you're being watched. And as you turn around, you spot, you spot someone looking at you. One of those black coats from the train. You see him peering around the corner, looking at you. He hasn't noticed that you're doing it, in, it with an ad 20. I'll say you're noticing him in such a slick way that he doesn't, he can't tell that you know he's there. But you do see he's like watching you and seeing what you're up to, trying to be slick about it. Where do you so, go from here? You're standing outside the hotel. I'm torn. Part of me wants to like go into said hotel and ask the concierge if... They know of anywhere where I can get some, some, maybe some data manipulated, maybe. Or just go confront trench coat dude. Let's just go confront, yeah. All right. Let's just go introduce myself. Hey, I'm new in town, kind of thing. Do you know, would you happen to know where I could get a, maybe a good cup of coffee or something? Okay. You go to approach this guy, and at this point... He could tell that he knows his the gig is up. He can't sneak around anymore. He comes from around the corner, and you could he is dressed. He has the black coat on, but he is dressed in what looks like teal, a mix of teal and white. He looks at you and goes, "Let's cut to the chase. I know you're not here for coffee. I've been following you for." Quite some time, Edgar. You did a really good job a couple days ago checking out that woman's PC. But it looks like now you've learned to bring most of yourself into this world. Yeah, like it's. Uh, I'm feeling it out here to see what's uh, what's going on. And we can have tea if you don't like coffee. Sorry, I don't touch the stuff. It's just. It's just, it's just monster for me. Those work too. So, what brings you here? Data manipulation. Of what kind? 
let's say let's start with something simple maybe images all right photography can candid photography okay are you looking to have something done or what exactly are you looking for granted i am curious i would like to know more about it but maybe i have a sample and maybe you could point me to someone that kind of does work like this and medgar shows the shows the picture can he detect that said photo is glowing or is that just something i've got going on he could tell ah, shit. he takes a look at it and he goes oh you're tracing i see huh at least you're getting the basics down on it so you're trying to figure out who did this photoshop huh that would be helpful, yes. Where is the photo leading you? In the general area, in front of the hotel, basically. I have an inkling. I was going to go in and maybe talk to the front desk, see if they knew anything. But if you have any info you'd like to share. Oh, I don't have any info about to do that. But when you're tracing, it usually helps you, whatever you're using to trace will help you get to your destination. When you walk through those doors, check the back of the photo. You should have a key or something. If you like, I'm willing to go with you since it seems like this is your first time here. True. I would greatly appreciate it. Granted, I, you seem to know my name, but I don't think you ever technically introduced yourself. Understandable. Some of us like to keep our identity secret. You could call me X for now. Okay. That'll work. It was either going to be that or trench coat, dude. I like X. It seems more fitting. Well, so as he approaches you to shake hands to say, nice to finally meet you in person. And if you look down at his hand, he has a ring on. I would like you to roll me a history check for me. I guess what? What? It's another net 20. Oh, shit! Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, damn! Oh, damn! With my bonus, that's a 27. Oh, Hell so, yeah. Damn. All about this dude right now. <laughs> you just looking at the ring he has on, and you recognize the insignia is that of Thoth. Ah, you could man. tell that this me person is a member of Thoth, the God. activist group. You get the feeling from basically circumstantial evidence that this is one of the people that's been trying to recruit you. So yeah, he has his hand out to shake. We'll shake. All right. He shakes your I, hand. I may burst into a cloud of nothing. Nope, you're fine. He goes, shall we? Lead the way. Cool. All right. I'm guessing we'll turn and head towards the front door. And I'm assuming I'll, as we pass the threshold of the hotel, taking X's advice, we'll check the sides of the image of the photo. Look on the back of the image, there is now a key card that says 807 on it. All right. Part of me just wants to go to the front desk to see if I have a reservation, maybe. I know I have a card, but that's... Yeah, go ahead. You're more than happy to. Just ask them and see. No, I'll ask if there are any messages for me. Yeah. To the rest of the group that is there watching this play out, have any of you tried to type something... To Edgar, he can't, you, he can't hear you, but there is a small little chat box if oh you wish gosh. to use it. Oh my gosh, chat box. And mm -hmm. this is how he gets messages. Is It's like almost like a mail system. So if has any of you, have any of you sent something to him? No bad emojis, guys. As Ramon quickly deletes. <laughs> Keep in mind that you all, you all are watching every moment of this go down. You can hear everything, see everything. Gotcha. No, I don't think right now Ramon has attempted to detect Edgar. Uh, he's, Dagny's not sending him any messages. However, when Dagny doesn't think anyone is looking, he will walk over to Edgar's body, slowly pull it out, pull out one of those like mini tape measures, and like, <laughs> start taking body measurements, and then slowly throw oh. the tape measure, put it back, <laughs> and disappear back. <laughs> Into his corner. Edgar, you get this strange feeling on the back of your neck that you're being judged. <sighs> the person at the front desk goes, Oh, Mr. Wallace, no, you don't have any messages yet. How is your stay so far? 
Not bad. Just uh, trying to, I guess, get my feet or my directional sense about me. But overall, it's been quite entertaining. Wonderful. Glad we can give you a good stay. And then uh, the front desk person goes back to whatever they were doing. Cool. So I guess is there part of me thinks that Edgar would want to just browse around a little bit to see if there's anything else going on in said lobby before heading up to, I guess, what, 807? The lobby is pretty empty. There's a couple of people there that are just mulling about. Nothing pops out as unusual to you. Nothing really of note. All right. Let's, let's head up to the room and see where my luggage is. All right. You head up to the room and swipe the card, head inside. You say it's, you know, it's, your luggage is pretty minimal. I mean, the data escape, people normally wear the same exact clothes day upon day, and they're just always clean. Makes sense. Yeah. However, what you did bring with you is this large computer surveillance setup. And what in front of you is a scanner. And you can see that the picture is basically now pure white. You can't make out the picture anymore on it because it's glowing so fiercely. The curious one in me says to, and I'm, ta- I'm guessing when you say scanner, this is a flatbed photo scanner kind of thing. Or like a radio scanner kind of thing. It's like a... It's like a visual scanner, so it's okay. those new, those, like, business card scanners that you put in and oh, it just yeah, feeds yeah. through. Okay. It's like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's introduce photo to said scanner and see what happens. All right. You put the photo into the scanner, and as it goes through on the other side of it, it doesn't fully come out. It just turns into code and f- almost, like, flies into the screen and such. And you see it appear on the screen saying, analyzing, and the progress bar begins to fill. As it's fill, X turns to you and goes, huh, even in this world, we still get lo- long loading times, huh? A day without a progress bar is not a day worth having, in my opinion. Uh, you're right about that. What else have you been up to? Have you discovered anything new about your data abilities? Not quite yet. Still kind of learning the ropes, I guess you could say. It would be nice if there was a manual I could read or a, a help file I could click into. Unfortunately, a lot of this stuff is all self-taught. Everyone who comes into technomancy has their own set of rules and ways of doing things. You always have to put your own signature flair on it. But as you've seen from this world, really anything's possible. Just... Be careful, especially in the state that you're in. You don't want your tether to be cut. So that's a bad thing, I'm guessing? Oh, yeah. Until you can physically come into this realm, if anything were to happen to your body or the connection to your the door that lets you in gets cut off, you'll be trapped here and you won't be able to leave. At the same time, if you were to die here, so will your body. So so there's no respawn? No, there isn't. That technology is still still being developed. I was going to say, I'm going to have to work on that one, I think. Have to research that some. Yeah, I think a few folks can work. I think a few folks were trying to practice with some revivify spells to turn them almost into respawn lives or something like that. Just for clarification, for everybody else who is in at the computer, you all can hear everything as if it was a video game. Yes, Dagny. So as, as Dagny is down measuring the width of his compatriot with his tape measure, he this conversation kind of comes off the speakers and like kind of sneaks over Dagny's shoulder, right? Flitters into his deep gnome ears, and he he blinks and slowly furls his, the tape measure, puts it back in his pocket, and then he Dagny will go to one side of, of Edgar and stand as much as he can in front of the little thread and open his hands like he's, if anything... <laughs> was to like come flying at it, he would stop it. And then he will mentally command Weissel, his little weasel, 
familiar who will come up on the other side and do the same thing. So they're like standing there protecting the little the little connection. <laughs> the USB umbilical cord. cord. Yeah, the, the USB cord. <laughs> wow, this is, really, this is literally turned into a Kojima game. Awesome. That's so, that, that's so sweet. That's fantastic. We're watching a long ass Kojima cutscene. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, this is the way that they're expressing to all of you as well of how important it is to protect Edgar as he's doing this. As you all begin to hear thunder from outside of the of the hotel. Oh, hell to the nah. It's it. This is the night. This is the night the big storm is supposed to happen. Ooh, remember, I yeah. swear to God, if we have a powder outage back inside the data scape, X is talking to you and it goes, well, it does seem like you have a lot to learn. Just don't be afraid of trying something out. There's a lot to technomancy and a lot of good that you can do. And yes, his eyes go up to the screen and he goes, and a lot of harm you could do with it too. And as you turn around that the photo has finished analyzing on the computer, you are now looking at you are now looking through the webcam into Nina's apartment. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and you all see this. He goes, so that's who you're dealing with, huh? How did you come into contact with her? Gosh, I'm trying to remember. We... God, I don't remember. Out of, out of character, I'm trying to recall how did... Who was somebody told us to go check out? Hold up, I got you. Let me look at my notes. <laughs> I was gonna say, was it? I can't remember if it was her or you were. Su- she was suggested to you to fix the USB. Yeah, she's that hacker right. lady. Okay, that's right. Okay, that's what I was trying to remember. I couldn't remember if it was before or after we had the run in from there. So I'll ask X, give him the backstory about the USB kind of filling me in. And I guess Edgar will ask to have, is there a history? You seem like, you know, some little bit more about her than, than you were initially wanting to share. She has applied for our, our organization many times. I do remember her saying that. Yeah, she has a few ulterior motives with her intent to join. She, she knows how powerful we are and the work that we can do and what she wants to do with us is going to cause more harm than good. She is trying to figure out a way to merge the cyber realm with the material world. And she's getting it, close. That sounds like it's not a good idea. What kind of doggone rumpa shit is this? <laughs> with what you could see that it's possible here imagine if that came into the into the material plane with everything that's merged with us now with magic and all of these creatures it would be a second awakening and this one could be a lot more devastating than the first i implore you that you need to put a stop to her before she figures this out. I will tell you the best way to do so is to just send her on the run. If she knows that you're after her, she would rather f- she'd rather fly than fight. Keep her on the run and you'll slow her down, slow down her progress. At least having one of you on her tail will help. So... I ask you, so, if you could spare it, I ask, I ask for your help in this, because it'll help the entire world out. Upon hearing this, back in the hotel room, the rest of you are watching this unfold, and the moment End's face appears on the screen, you see her, she's in the process of typing, coding, that kind of stuff. Middle of this conversation, you see this small smirk come on her face. Wyatt, watching. And she go, and he goes, because keep in mind, when y'all have met N, Wyatt was never there. 
This is his first time seeing N. And he goes, Valkyrie? Come again? He looks at her and goes, That's Valkyrie. We were bounty hunters together a long time ago, and she disappeared after betraying me and my team. They need somebody to chase her. They got one. As he turns around and bolts out of the room. Oh, fuck. (laughs) You're watching this unfold. You all continue to watch as Rashmi goes out. I'm sorry, as uh, Wyatt goes out. Wait, what no. am I doing? <laughs> Rashmi, you're fine. As <laughs> Wyatt goes out to chase. I'm so confused. You all get the feeling that he's going to be fine on his own. Technically, he doesn't know where N even is. <laughs> but as you are all watching, Alex, you have just entered the room in your little spider form. You watch as you see Nina at the computer, typing away, and such. What do you do? So, I at this point, I've seen the lead box that I know the sword is in. Yes. And there's just Nina at the bottom of the stairs, right? Yes, typing away on her computer. You don't know what exactly she's doing. You can't really see what's on the computer, but she's work. She is focused. So, I think... I'm going to I'm going to crawl my way over to the stairs. I'm and then I will straight drop wild shape and just sit there like this. My hand and my there my head and my hands. Gosh, dang it. Megan the Stallion is just like abort, bitch, abort mission. You she continues to type and you start hearing her very softly start singing Itsy Bitsy Spider. Itsy Bitsy Spider went up the water spout. What are you doing this moment? Yeah, so... You're just I, watching. You're just sitting there, like, watching her. She's singing as she's singing. Song. I'd love to know why she's character. Sing. She continues to type, and she goes, Out came... Okay. Down came the rain, and... Holds up a card in front of your face. To everyone else watching, at that moment, she disappears. To you, Alex, as the card begins to grow green and explode into a sphere of magic, and you find yourself frozen, unable to speak, unable to move, Caught in a time stop spell. Oh, shit. I know she got level nines? What? It's a spell school. Oh, Even still, right. fucking time so stop. She can no use level joke. nine spell school? She's a level 20 character. She is. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> damn. Damn. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, by the way, that D4 I rolled last week, do you remember what I rolled on that? I rolled a four. Oh, no. Fuck you. Also, oh, shit. Out of- out of like poetic irony, you know what you could have. I'm just thinking of this. Yeah. What if you had true polymorphed me into a spider? Oh no, I'm not done yet. <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! Good. Why'd you give up ideas? <laughs> uh, yeah. So that four time spot is one d four plus one turn. With a roll of four, she has five turns of oh, stuff to do. A whole, whole thirty seconds. Yep. And she yeah, continues. And watch. The spider out. As you see her turn her head towards you. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. As she stands up, opens the box, and takes out the jade sword. Puts it into a sheath. As she stands up and turns towards you, you see now she has two katanas on her. She pulls the other one out. And it is crimson blood red. She walks up to you at the banister and goes, Do you want to know why? I want to know why I killed those people. You want to know why I took this sword? First and foremost, you should probably check more of the dark web when looking into my victims. If Thoth doesn't want me, 
Then I'll just take them down. Yeah, they were all members of Thoth. Secretly. But then you all had to show up and be the righteous beings that you are. So I had to up the ante. Ah, it seems at least one of you is smarter than the rest. You found me. Now it's time to come catch me. And she slowly opens the door and walks out, continuing to sing and hum along with the tune. Slowly, and as it, after the door closes, a couple seconds pass before the spell ends and you're able to move again. I think the immediate response to that, and I know how this is going to go, I'll yank open the door and run downstairs and see if I can catch any sight of her. Okay. As I'm pulling up my phone <laughs> to call, I would be. I would call Ramon. I guess I'll call Rashmi. What? <laughs> okay. When it, are you calling her as you're running there? Yeah, yeah. I'm calling Rashmi as I'm running downstairs. Okay. Because I don't know that they know, right? Yeah, you don't know that they know. The rest of you, all you saw was her just vanish. Rashmi, your phone rings. It's Nina. Hey, wait, we found her. It's Nina. <laughs> like a popcorn bucket goes flying. I'm running. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, getting up, trying to get ready. I had popcorn the entire time. Edgar X looks at you and is like, of course she had that fucking scroll. Looks like they need you back in the material plane. We'll meet again. I'm sure. But I think I need to get you back to your teammates and quick. Do you want to take the express route? Or would you like to go back the way you came? That's how I was going to ask if there was a quick exit. I'm mean, hoping it's not like a control alt delete thing and to just end I'm done. But not really. But I can I could just like how I shunted you out of that last computer, I could do the same. This one's just gonna maybe be a bit more disorienting. But don't worry. Queasiness goes away after a couple minutes. As you see his hands come together as circles of digital energy start preparing around it. And he goes, see you next time. As he pushes both of his hands straight into your chest, you feel yourself fly backwards. The sights of the city and the train and everything flashing behind you until you find yourself slam back into your chair where you began. And here I was hoping I would get to click my heels together three times. Alex, as you leave the apartment building to see if you catch a glimpse of Nina, roll a perception check for me. I'm good at perception. 24? 24. You leave the apartment building. You don't see her. However, from the nightclub, area of the nightclub, you hear... A commotion as if when someone tries to cut the line and pushes past everybody and people start yelling at them. Something like that. What's the rest of you all doing? With that recent development, text Alex be like, yo, what the? F- I haven't hung up on Rashmi yet. I'm still on the phone. Yeah, with all you oh, heard no, is me let's scream. Let's make it a three-way call. Hold up. <laughs> all you heard was me scream, it's Nina, and then proceed to throw a popcorn bucket in the air and start to running out the door. I will say, as soon as I see that nightclub thing, I'm going to run off there and say there's a commotion at the nightclub, like in front of the nightclub. So I'll say, uh, we went by the nightclub. I'm going to go to the nightclub. Guys, go to the nightclub. Let's go. Mr. Nibbles, clean up the popcorn. All right. Alrighty. Daggy is not leaving his post protecting Edgar's uh, USB cable. Oh, it's gone. By the time that he gets back to his body, the cable's gone. Oh, then... He's uh, back in his body. Then Dagny will turn to Edgar and be like, my my friend, is everything okay? Still a little disoriented, but... Do you need a cup of Vasa? Sure. That would definitely help. Or would... I go get you some Vasa. Yeah, I get you the Vasa. Yeah. And Dagny will go and find a little cup of water and bring it to Edgar. All right. You bring the water to Edgar. Things and are try- just help Edgar, like, recover from 
Just come, just come and get tossed out of the cyberverse. Cyberverse. <laughs> all right. Cool. Uh, and I assume that all of you are headed down to the nightclub now. Let's do this. Yeah. yeah I just want all to right. See. You all make it to the nightclub. You meet up with Alex there. And do you see a large crowd of people lined up outside waiting for their turn to get in? You see a lot of them just looking around confused as if who the hell was whoever just pushed their way through that kind of stuff. But you are all standing outside of the nightclub. As you begin to hear the thunder roar, the roll in, and rain begins to fall. So did the commotion seem like they were like pushing their way into yes. the nightclub? Okay, so yeah, they're in the nightclub. We gotta go. Who has an idea on how to get through this? Boom, bitch, boom! And start running through people. <laughs> hey, Chris? How big are these doors? How big are the stairs in the nightclub? The nightclub stairwell is pretty small. You will need to squeeze to get two people past each other. I can't fit a large creature up the stairs. No, okay, no. Okay. But you can fit a large creature through the doors. Yes, Dagny? Last session, Dagny was running like all up and around the inside and then ran out up to the roof of the nightclub in Weissel's body trying to, I think what I said was looking through all the nooks and crannies. Yeah. While he did that, did he maybe see like a fire escape that like the team could access and then maybe do a, like an entry through the roof area? Because I remember there were two other people that were up on the roof investigating investigating that came up through the nightclub so my memory serves if memory serves me correctly there is a dory up on the roof yeah so there is actually a fire escape on the side of the building it doesn't go all the way up to the roof it goes up to the final floor like window of the building but not all the way up to the roof but it will get you in then uh, hopefully before anyone tears off dagny will be like Mein Freund, there, there is a fire escape on the side of the building. Oh, it, it goes to the final floor. However, if we can make it to the roof, there is a way inside that we do not have to go through all the people. I do not like sweat. And then Dagny will proceed to ca- uh, to, to summon Hans, his in, his invisible... Unseen servant. His, his unseen servant, yes. Okay. So y'all are headed to the fire escape? Yes. Up we go. Oh. All right. You start heading up the fire escape. Make it to the top floor right before the roof. Head inside the fire escape door. As you head down the hallway, that there is a set of stairs that are going up to the roof. And the set of stairs that are heading back down to the nightclub. As you approach that inner junction, you hear the roof door slam shut. I turn, I turn to the sound. <laughs> you turn to the sound. <laughs> Nobody's. Turn to, yes. Yes, I turn to the sound. Sorry, I was in the middle of about to pick up burp that never happened. But so you hear the music coming from downstairs. You hear a door slam upstairs. Oh, shit. I feel like the door upstairs is important. Yeah, just let's, let's do this. Just Ramon starts heading off. Yeah, let's run. All right. You make it to the rooftop. You come out that main doorway. And what in front of you on the opposite side of the roof? You see a black helicopter with Nina standing in the doorway holding both katanas. What the fuck? Dude, that cancels your blade song. What are you doing, dog? <laughs> that she's no longer in like the oversized hoodie, messed up hair, all that. She is now in a sleek outfit, hair down, high heeled, kick your ass type person, like secret agent looking. Below you, there is a small like little water tower type thing that is on the rooftop that you see four samurai. Four of her samurai cohorts crouch down upon that as you get up there, they jump down to your level. They jump down to the floor level of the roof. As you watch the suits, the skin tight suits they have on begin to transform into more traditional samurai garb. 
one of which, the one who's also holding two katanas, there is just beginning to glow. You see her, Nina, taking a look at the jade katana and goes, I don't need this one anyway. She picks up her red one and goes, I have my blood drinker anyway. I'm sure we'll meet again. Yes, Dagny? As she's monologuing, can Dagny cast web right on top of the helicopter? Sure. You cast... Oh, yeah. So as she does the whole, I don't need the jade one. I have Dagny's just going to be like, Unt, Vevin! And just drop it right on top of the helicopter. So you're forming it above the helicopter and having it drop? Right, yes. Yeah. So it's going to fall right on top of... In the hopes of gumming up the rotor blades, in the hopes of just making it a big, that the helicopter a big sticky mess, and anyone that's going in or out of that thing is going to have issues. How far away from them are we within? Is she within thirty feet of him? I guess is my question. No. <laughs> okay. Cool. cool. Can't count. Is she it. is she within a hundred feet? Oh no, she's within. She's within thirty feet of the spell being cast. Oh, shit. She ca- she's in the helicopter, and you're casting it over the helicopter? Or, I'm sorry, clarification. I'm going to cast the web on the helicopter's rotor blades. Okay. So that they connect to the roller blades, so they they have an anchor point. And then let I'll let physics that's, be my friend. That's really interesting. I don't know how strong the it web is. is. It is. But... As she's watching you, at, while she's trying to give this monologue, she sees you as you cast a spell. She waves her hand and counterspells it. That's right. She does have uh, counterspell prepared. How far are we from her? You are... Hold on. I gotta measure this. Yeah, that'll work. Oop, that, that's not what I want. Oh, counterspell's 60 feet, not 30. I'm crazy. Ignore me. You are about 120 feet away. Well, that kills oh, my idea. If we were 120 feet away, I couldn't cast Web. Web's only 60 feet. Oh, then never mind then. Yeah, you're about... She's far enough away. She's on the opposite side of the roof, and it's a pretty long okay. roof. Okay. Okay. Save that spell spot. Yeah, save the spell spot. She continues her monologue, essentially saying, We'll meet again someday. And that's if my friends don't do anything worse to you. At that moment, she tosses down... The jade blade. As the jade blade stabs into blade down into the rooftop on target where there is a canister. As the canister begins to spill out smoke, obscuring the view of the samurai. She looks up to you and goes, your little shapeshifter friend there is a smart one. I feel targeted. Yeah, he goes, and a dumb one. Just thought you should know. As the p- helicopter turns and begins to fly off, the blades push enough air to push the smoke screen away. And you cannot see any of the samurai now. And all is that jade blade stabbed into the ground on the opposite side of the rooftop. Oh, shit. I would like all of you to make, to roll initiative, please. This has been a Vibe Tribe production. Remember, take care of each other, love one another, and as always, keep those good times rolling. We'll see you next time.